The other day I was walking down a familiar alley in the neighborhood and I came across a site that was reminiscent of my childhood. It seems like it was only yesterday that I used to play cricket or attempted to play cricket in the same alley. This alley was now occupied by a new set of children with their incomplete cricket gear, playing with the dedication of an all-important World Cup match. To me, this was vivid as well as heartwarming. They had the same arguments, the same childish rivalries, and the never-ending enthusiasm had found a home even today. It got me thinking fondly of how most of my childhood memories are the ones where I played outdoors with my friends. Of how we could throw a badminton racket at a tree and you know, try to get the shuttlecock off it. Or how our play used to be stopped because the entry gate of our building was um, the goalpost while, while we were playing football. As a child, one of the first things we tend to fall in love with is the comfort and familiarity of our neighborhood even though there is no suitable space to play in. But what's sad about these otherwise joyful memories is that as we grow up, the idea of being a footballer or a cricketer died among most of us. Almost 15 years later, standing in front of the same alley, the same questions worry me. What about the dreams of these children who are running around in these gullies and mahallas? Will they be ever realized? Will these children not get a conduit or even a slight nudge to explore their dreams? Dreams which sooner or later will most probably meet an end due to severe lack of well-suited infrastructure. This as a concern has been pushed under the rug quite too often. And that is sustainable infrastructure for all. Why is it, as a nation, that has such potential as ours, only seems to consider the case of sports when reputation is involved, or, or there's a, a you know, a extreme sentiment of nationalism involved? For most of India today, sports is just an afterthought. Well, this might be okay on the surface, but the problem is far more deep-rooted than we think. There is very little importance that is being given to infrastructure, to the fact that we need to develop a sports industry, and especially in the context of infrastructure. There is conversation about developing residential spaces, there is conversation about developing hospitals. There is conversation about developing bigger sports arenas, bigger stadiums. But what about small, small infrastructure and sustainable infrastructure? In fact, the rude awakening is that as a society, we don't facilitate our children from going out altogether. That's one point. But we also prohibit them from going out completely to play. Even if you are not passionate about sports, the idea of going outdoors and playing is highly important. It is beneficial to our health. So I'm here to advocate that to build a culture of sports, building the right infrastructure is highly important. A few years ago, I had the chance to visit Latur, a small district in the state of Maharashtra. What I had come across then surprised me in the best possible way. A local NGO had worked extensively in the lesser developed regions of Latur for a special but a historically outcasted group, the Pardi community. Pardi community is a tribe of nomads and hunter-gatherers who travel from village to village. During the colonization of India, the Pardis rebelled against the British, British laws which resulted in them being labeled as a criminal tribe. Decades later, even after the Indian government had denotified this tribe, they still marginalized, they still discriminated against. The perception of them being criminals still has not gone away. Which had this NGO working towards the dignity of the tribe by bringing in employment and education? When I visited one of the schools built for them, I noticed the presence of simple sports infrastructure that had led to the complete transformation of one of the most disregarded communities in our country. 
the children from the school had the opportunity to set foot on national arenas in various sports, especially in Malakham, which is an Indian martial art. The mere availability of basic play facilities had seen such a result. That's when I realized the power of sports infrastructure. Take another example, that of Nandini Salokhe, a national wrestling champion whose efforts led to the construction of a gym and a coaching center in Murgud, another small village in Maharashtra. This very system has helped at least half a dozen individuals to become national level medalists in just a few years. Seeing change happen through all these examples led to the formation of Swastam Foundation. Swastam Foundation is a collective effort of me and my father, Mr. Rajan Khanna, to bring high quality sports facilities to downtrodden and lesser privileged areas of India, while also creating awareness about it. You might choose to believe me when I say most tier one cities in the world have satisfactory sports, but we are as underprivileged as the ones living in the rural and the downtrodden areas, which, which goes to show that this is a case of mass neglect than anything else. Swastham is a small step in creating a conversation about this, and this very platform stands as a powerful medium. One of our first three projects at Swastham Foundation was at Donglipara in Vada, again a small district in Maharashtra, with a population running in a few hundreds. We built a basic but a high standard multiplay area with artificial turf, with the help of another NGO a play area that can outdo most of the facilities in the city. Further along, we decided to look at areas where introducing sports facilities had a much bigger impact than health itself. We explored developing play facilities in the border regions of Jammu and Kashmir that report high juvenile crime rates and frequent insurgencies. Using sports to help people, especially the youth, has proven to be an effective method in keeping them from falling into a cycle of antisocial behavior, violence, crime, and drug use. It is the best means to channelize their negative energies into positive ones. More especially, sports offers an important opportunity for building life skills for at-risk youth that allow them to better cope with daily life challenges. Sports helps us in presenting the world with a universal language and a sense of belonging and support. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the UNODC's Youth Crime Prevention Initiative, not only directly helps schools, youth centers, young people, but it also advocates for more innovative use of sports in the context of youth crime prevention. They corroborate our initiative. They designed a sports-based teaching program to provide young people with essential life skills that have proven to build their resilience against crime, violence, and drug use. Our second experiment was at Bada again. Bada is popularly known for its heavy industrial presence. The local factory owners complained about low labor productivity and habitual alcoholism of their workers. When we had a conversation with the workers, we realized that many of them enjoy practicing sports or other recreational activities during their lunch breaks or after work. Besides being fun, such activities are also likely to increase their physical and mental well-being. Having recreational facilities can improve the relationship between the management and the workers, improve their morale, and also help in reducing absenteeism. A report published by the State Bank of India Research said India's labor productivity was significantly lower than its global peers. A productive workforce is a key objective of public economic policy. Recent empirical work suggests that increasing individual participation in sports can, and exercise can be a major driving force for achieving this goal. However, this brings me to my focal point. Swastham Foundation failed miserably in introducing sports infrastructure in both our initiatives. The problem was in lack of space. The problem was in funding. The problem was the mindset. Mindset is the first pillar, the first stepping stone of building sustainable infrastructure. Sustainable sports infrastructure is the backbone of sports. While everyone involved in India's ecosystem keeps talking about the grassroots, but the majority of the efforts are concentrated at the top, the talented minority. 40% of children in India lack fitness, and 46% of children living in metropolitan cities are obese or overweight. These numbers are frightening. 
putting all eggs in one basket isn't really a foolproof strategy after all. Heavy investments made with the aim of facilitating participation at international events isn't enough. To give an example, 90% of villages in China have basic sports infrastructure, like a basketball and table tennis facility. Anyone who has been to a European country that dominates in international sports can attest that the basic standard of play even among recreational players is quite high. Most of them may not go on to make a career in sport, but are taught basics of sport in the right manner in schools. In fact, playing and watching sports is a part of their social life. We as a country cannot boast of a sports culture unless we start at the very bottom and move upwards. How many schools across the country promote sports as an active means of learning and not just a mode of recreation? Aren't our actions, our outlook today, still influenced by the mental conditioning that exists in our society towards sports? Many families still believe that sports is just for those who aren't good at studies. The problem dwells at the foundation itself. The fact that a physical training class at school can be replaced by physics or maths is the problem. The realization needs to happen that sports and fitness are not replaceable. And for that, we have to change the way we think about it. Sports is equal to academics. It was just a change in mindset that led to the formation of a gymnasium at Murgud. It was just a change in mindset that helped in providing sports facilities at a small school in Latur and helping in being the wind beneath the wings of many aspirational children. An ideal situation is where the governments, local bodies and interested corporations help in building the required infrastructure while the local communities help in sustaining them by a proper system for training and development. We don't always need big sports stadiums or arenas. Something as even as small as providing basic sports equipment, goalposts, nets or some board games, magazines is the right starting point. What this will achieve is a change in our outlook. And what we will see in the coming years is a highly fit global society. It can start from a change in perspective and lead us to creating countless opportunities for aspirational and hardworking children across the country. The first step towards building sustainable sports infrastructure is a change in my mindset, your mindset, our mindset. The smallest contribution that is made collectively can bring about the biggest difference. It can change the faith of billions of dreams that are born in these gullies and mohallas that you and I grew up playing in. We have started doing our part. So have many others. Will you start doing yours too?